Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our carol service uh, this evening. You are most welcome if you're visiting us and here for the first time. You are very welcome to come and join us. My name's Andrew Carter. I'm one of the ministers here with Alex, uh, who sat in the choir back there tonight. And you're very welcome to, to be with us here tonight. And also just want to say a warm welcome to all those who are joining us online because the service is being live streamed for people who, who weren't able to attend tonight as well. So you're very welcome and uh, hopefully we may see some more of you over this Christmas period as well. The service tonight is going to proceed from now onwards unannounced and uh, you, the words will appear on the screen and everything will be there for you. Thank you. First reading is from Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. They lived in a land of shadows, but now light is shining on them. You have given them great joy, Lord. You have made them happy. They rejoice in what you have done as people rejoice when they harvest their corn or when they divide captured wealth. For you have broken the yoke that burdened them and the rod that beat their shoulders. You have defeated the nation that oppressed and exploited your people, just as you defeated the army of Midian long ago. The boots of the invading army and all their blood-stained clothing will be destroyed by fire. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and he will be our ruler. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. His royal power will continue to grow. His kingdom will always be at peace. He will rule as King David's successor, basing his power on right and justice from now until the end of time. The Lord Almighty is determined to do all of this.
Let us pray together. Gracious God, this is a time which means so much to us and which says so much in so many different ways. But if there is one thing that stands out above all others, others, it is the joy you brought through the birth of your son, Jesus. A child is born for us, a son is given, and we will greet him. When Mary learned she was to be the mother of the Saviour, she sang her songs of praise. When Elizabeth greeted her, the baby in her womb leapt for joy. When the multitude of angels appeared to the shepherds, they proclaimed news of great joy for all people. And when both the shepherds and the wise men had seen the Lord for themselves, they were overwhelmed by the wonder of it all, going on their way rejoicing. Time and again, it was the same story of some spontaneous celebration. A child is born for us, a son is given, and we will greet him. Gracious God, in the hustle and bustle of Christmas, in the ceremony and tradition, help us in this time to find you, to know you in our hearts, and to celebrate the love that you have for us. Help us to put our energies into all that you have given for us, in the way that we support and help one another, helping our neighbours throughout the world. Help us to enjoy all the fun and festivity of love and laughter, of giving and receiving. But help us also keep in mind the reality at the heart of this season, the message which it is finally all about, that a child is born, a son is given, and we will greet him. May the glad tidings of the angels, the news of great joy to all people, Stir afresh our imagination so that we may experience and understand for ourselves the great truth of Christmas, that a Saviour is born, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Let's say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
second reading is from Isaiah chapter 52. The Lord says, my servant will succeed in his task. He will be highly honored. Many people were shocked when they saw him. He was so disfigured that he hardly looked human. But now many nations will marvel at him and kings will be speechless with amazement. They will see and understand something they had never known. Yeah. 
The third reading is taken from Luke chapter 1. The birth of Jesus is announced. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee named Nazareth. He had a message for a young woman promised in marriage to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Peace be with you. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Mary was deeply troubled by the angel's message and she wondered what his words meant. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king as his ancestor David was, and he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, I am a virgin, how then can this be? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you and God's power will rest upon you. For this reason the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. Remember your relative Elizabeth. It is said that she cannot have children, but she herself is now six months pregnant even though she is very old. For there is nothing that God cannot do. <coughs> I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. And the angel left her.
Wall Street England for this evening is taken from Luke chapter 1, the birth of Jesus. And these days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own hometown to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Amen.
Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. The shepherds and the angels. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary, she treasured them up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
The reading is from Matthew 1. Visitors from the East. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. Soon afterwards, some men who studied the stars came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the baby born to be the king of the Jews? We saw his star when it came up in the east, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was very upset, and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and teachers of the law and asked them, Where will the Messiah be born? In the town of Bethlehem in Judea, they answered, for this is what the prophet wrote. Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are by no means the least of the leading cities of Judah, for from you will come a leader who will guide my people Israel. So Herod called the visitors from the east to a secret meeting and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem with these instructions, go and make a careful search for the child. And when you find him, let me know so that I too may go and worship him. And so they left and on their way, they saw the same star they had seen in the east. When they saw it, how happy they were, what joy was theirs. It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They went into the house, and when they saw the child with his mother Mary, they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, and presented them to him. Then they returned to their country by another road, since God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod.
reading from John's Gospel, chapter 1. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. From the very beginning, the Word was with God. Through him, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without him. The Word was the source of life, and this life brought light to humanity. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. God sent his messenger, a man named John, who came to tell the people about the light, so that all should hear the message and believe. He himself was not the light. He came to tell about the light. This was the real light, the light that comes into the world and shines on everyone. The word was in the world, and though God made the world through him, yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not re receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believed in him, so he gave them the right to become children, God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means, that is, by being born of the, as the children of a human father. God himself was their father. The word became a human being and full of grace and truth, lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received as the father's only son. Amen. Sorry, there we go. When you press the wrong button, it doesn't help. You suddenly lose your talk. Another part of Luke's gospel in chapter one, Mary says this, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit exalts within me in God my saviour, for he has looked on the lowliness of his servants. From now on and for all time, People will call me blessed because the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Magnify is the word I want to choose. When I was a child, we used to have a magnifying glass. And I used to love playing with this magnifying glass. I would look at things as close as I could to see in detail what things were like. I'd look really closely, maybe at a leaf or into some moss, and sort of see, hopefully, that jungle of an experience into that, that place that you might see. Might something see something tiny crawling around inside. Everywhere looked different. Somehow a different place. A different being. At Christmas time, there are certain films that are always on at Christmas. We will probably watch The Sound of Music. We will probably watch The Muppets Christmas Carol. And the other one that tends to be the film that everybody watches at Christmas these days as well is Toy Story. Toy Story, the story about Andy and all his toys and his ne nemesis, Sid, because Sid has a magnifying glass as well. And Sid isn't nice with his magnifying glass. He goes round and he burns things, sometimes the toys and sometimes creatures. Well, I have to say, I wasn't cruel. I didn't burn any creatures with the magnifying glass. But I have to be honest and say, I always got slightly fascinated by being able to hold it to a piece of paper and watch that little wisp of smoke start to appear as the, the paper started to burn. I have to say, I've left those things behind me. Don't worry. And I don't carry a magnifying glass around with me. But this idea of magnifying. I remember at school, you remember that first time you got to look through a microscope 
and look at something in really close detail. Maybe this time looking at a bug that is on one of those slides that you look through and looking to see how hairy its legs were. Or maybe these days the magnification comes as we look into the night sky and we see the images that are sent back by the satellites that are out there taking amazing photographs looking back to the beginnings of creation seeing everything in its place being magnified all these things open up for us a whole new world something that maybe we couldn't at one point ever imagine and here we have Mary talking about magnifying the Lord. The clue is there in the opening line. My soul magnifies the Lord. The expression is really quite an old-fashioned one. And depending on which translation you look in the, at the Bible, sometimes they're altered and it says glorifies, which is a perfectly good word, or praise, just as good. But there is something powerful and majestic in that word magnify those words in some ways have lost the importance of what it's saying when we don't use the word magnify on one level it's talking simply about God but on another level it is also about Mary and the way God has taken on a whole new significance within her life suddenly for her a new world has opened up. A world in which she's glimpsed God's greatness, God's goodness, as never before. Recognizing that he is actively involved in her life and that he's actively involved in the world. For Mary, of course, the circumstances were special, yet the coming of Christ and his coming again to each one of us through his spirit means that we too can taste that joy and experience in a similar way that we too this christmas time can magnify the lord as christ dwells in us as he also dwelt in mary advent points us to christmas then in turn to catch sight of the awesomeness and the sovereignty of God so that we may thrill at his presence and join with Mary in declaring, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit exalts within me, God, my Savior. Amen. We've taken up an offering uh, as you came in, there's been offering plates uh, also I think as you go out and all the offerings is received are for St Oswald's Hospice and can I ask can the offering now be received, is that being brought forward? Right. Okay, that's fine. I wasn't sure whether it was being brought, no we'll leave them there, they'll be perfectly fine there. So there are boxes there, if you've already put something in, thank you. If you haven't, then please feel free to put something in on the way out. And the, the gifts tonight are going to St. Oswald's Hospice. But we'll just say a prayer of dedication for those gifts. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you that in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given to us a most wonderful gift. And we pray that you would take the gifts that we give tonight, use them to your praise and glory, and take our lives that we may magnify your holy name. Amen.
And I, to close, would just thank Ernest and the choir for leading us tonight. And just to wish you all a very happy Christmas next week and pray that you will have a really good time and a blessed time and that you're welcome to come and join with us for the services we have over the weekend. And now may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remain with us now and always. Amen. with the choir and we just wanted to mark that and say a simple thank you and um, make a little presentation to you Ernest sorry to interrupt you it's the, only, it's the only chance I'm going to get you never argue with the organist as a minister but um, big thank you to Ernest I'd also like to acknowledge Pauline uh, for the support that she inevitably gives to Ernest and, um, as he's out all the time doing music things and uh, we do appreciate you as well Pauline. So. Voluntary. <laughs> <laughs> 